So today I'm going to show you how to put together this gorgeous clutch bag. This is the Kiss Clasp Clutch Bag um, and this is what it looks like when it's made up. It's got a really nice curvy shape. It looks like lips doesn't it? I expect that's where they got the name from. And it has a lovely piece of hardware there that you can just, it's like two little bobbles that just sort of catch together. Two loops as well, two metal loops. Um, so you can actually thread a chain through this or maybe even some cord, some leather, whatever you fancy to go with your design. But it's really sweet. So what I've done already is actually cut my pieces out, but I'm going to show you the main piece um, so you can hopefully see um, how I did that. But I really want to show you how to cut the interfacing because it's slightly different. So here we are. Now hopefully you'll be able to see this. It's difficult because you're seeing the wrong side of the fabric it's always better to transfer the designs of the template onto the wrong side um, because that way you'll be able to see these lines when you're stitching so if I bring the template in and pop that over you'll be able to see how I drew around that I cut into my notches and that I drew my dart line with your interfacing it's slightly different so that's one I've cut already and then I've got a piece I'm going to show you and I've chosen white so I'm hoping you're going to see this so let's see let's get it on here now with the main fabric and the lining I've been drawing around the outside so here around the outside but with the interfacing we're actually going to be drawing on the stitch line where it says seam line here let me turn that round so you can see so where that says seam line there which is these pieces here I'm going to draw it because you'll see it better when I draw it that's where you're going to cut for the interfacing now the reason for that is because we're going to iron this interfacing onto your fabric and it sort of takes out some of the bulk of the fabric. You don't need the interfacing to be onto the seam. So now can you see? So that line we're going to ignore. So that's the one I just demonstrated before with the outer edge. We don't need that at all. We're going to cut on the seam line. Now I've only I've folded my interfacing in half just to make it easier. And I'm going to cut it like that. But I'm also going to pin it so I hold all my layers together and if you're really brave you can cut um, double this so you get both layers cut at the same time so just with a nice sharp pair of scissors I'm just going around my um, seam line so don't forget this is the outer edge this is the seam line and you'll see when I put it onto the fabric what a difference it makes so what I've done is I've actually put this stabiliser on the wrong side of my main fabric. So that's the right side, that's the wrong side. And I've remarked where the darts are going to go. Because I've already kind of got my seam allowance because I've made my interfacing quarter of an inch smaller, as you know, by, by cutting smaller. And also with the lining, I've actually put all of those markings back in again. So I've put all the seam allowances in there and the darts as well. So now I'm going to stitch it together. So now I'm going to start stitching. So this is the lining piece. Now you can see we've put the dart in there. So all I need to do, see the little circle and my little um, pointer there, my little arrow? Then all I'm going to do is marry those up together. I've got right sides together like that. Give it a little finger crease. And I'm just going to stitch along the line that I've drawn. And then just repeat for the other side. So here you can see that I've actually machine stitched down all the darts. So I've actually, actually um, moved them all to the centre of the bottom of the bag. So they're facing into the centre. And I've actually stay stitched. Um, I'll just cut my threads off in a second. But I've actually stay stitched that down. So once I press that, that'll stay like that. In the instructions it says to iron to that side. So we might as well stitch them down. And those little darts, they all meet up. That's your meeting point. So the next thing I'm going to do is iron all of these ready for stitching together. So in this part I'm going to show you how now to stitch the lining and the main pieces of fabric together and how that works. So all you need to do is line up your notches so it's the second notch down from the top so if I turn it this way it might be easier 
So um, there we are. So there's the curve of the bag there. Okay. You've got the first notch there. Ignore that one. Come down to the second one. And that's the one you're going to stitch from. So I'm going to pin it just to hold it in place. The same the other side. Ignore the first one that you come to. Go to the second one and just pin. And that's where you're going to start stitching. Don't forget this is the lining and this is the piece that where you're going to leave a little gap. Just at the bottom here, um, about, let's measure it, yeah, about four inches and I'm going to leave a gap. So starting from that little notch, so I'm putting my machine down, my foot down, but I'm actually going to take my pin away. Um, please try not to machine over your pins. And I'm going to do a back stitch because it needs to be strong. So just getting all your darts lined up, all your seams lined up as best you can. So now I've stitched all the way around my outside fabric, my main part. So now I'm going to just snip those corners, those curves there, just to make sure that they fold in nicely. Nice sharp pair of scissors. So that is our main bag completed, albeit inside out. So the next thing we need to do is actually attach these two pieces together. The lining and the main fabric need to be put together and we need right sides to right sides. So what I'm going to do is keep my outer bag as it is, but I'm going to turn my lining the other way around. So right side is now facing out. And you could give this a press now at this stage if you wish. We've got right side right side and all I'm going to do is match my notches up. Um, ideally I would use quilting clips but I'm going to use pins because you may not have quilting clips. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is match my notches up here. So both layers together around the lovely curve of the bag. It really is a lovely curve. So that's all four, where the little notches are, have been joined together. Now, because it's right sides together, that's ready to stitch. And I'm going to stitch all the way around the bag. So just making sure that all those seams have been caught and you haven't missed anything out, but that looks absolutely fine. What you're going to do is just snip these curves. And then you're going to turn it right side round. So do you remember we left this little gap here? So you're just going to pull it all the way through. So I'm just going to take this away now and give this an iron so it's all lovely and crisp, ready for the hardware. And now we've got the perfect, perfect start to putting our hardware on to the back. So all I'm going to do is line this up. Now I would start with the curve. So if you make sure that the, the middle of your bag, where that curve is, fits the middle of your hardware, and so everything is then going to match. If in fact we open this up, it might be easier. So I'll pop that inside out of the way. So I would be inclined to actually start stitching from there, and that at least holds that in the right place. So if I put my needle through, round about here and that knot is going to be on the inside let's pop that down again and then what I'm going to do is take my needle and come up through one of the little holes the one that's as, as far into the middle as you can get and that's going to start securing that into place so if I pull that tight then I know I'm in the right place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that next hole. So all I'm going to do is pop my needle through that next hole. I'm just going to make sure I've got to turn it so I can see it. But I'm going to come up fairly close to where I was before. There we go. And just pull that tight. And what you'll find is as you start stitching, so it'll grab and it will start getting much much easier so I've gone into the next hole I'm hoping you can see this so I've done this one I've come up there but I'm going to go back into that one 
so I've got a continuous row of stitches. What you could do is that you could go one way like a running stitch and then come back on yourself. So all the time I'm making sure that I'm about the same seam allowance on the other side. So that can you see now? That's pulled that together. Because I'm using variegated thread, I'm going to get all those colours of the stitches um, on my bag. So again, I'm just going to have a little look on the back, come up through that next hole, which is up here. There we go. There we go. Do you see? Hopefully you'll see. And then all I'm going to do then is to come back on myself into that hole there and make sure that my stitches are still looking good. It's difficult doing it at this funny angle for you, so hopefully you'll see. Now what you'll do is you'll continue all the way along this side until you get to there. Now this, you, look, can you see, this is where we turned it through. You've got the most perfect, perfect folded seam there and your little hinge is going to nestle right in there absolutely beautifully. So if I get the one in that we've already made, hopefully you'll see now how that works. So all of those stitches have gone right to the end and my little hinge nestles beautifully at the seam. So that's our finished bag. I hope you've enjoyed making it.